let me let me get into it. She's been through some stuff, many years. She's been through some trying times. She's also gone viral with some of her, the, her moments. Uh, but most of you are going to be familiar with that stuff. Now, she's also a recording artist, which is a chapter that I didn't know about until, you know, uh, years back. But I've known her in different spaces, in the sports uh, spaces when she was growing up and things like that. So that's where I was familiar with. But it's no surprise to me that she gets into music just because of if you look at the family history and the lineage that she's coming from and the people that she was surrounded by, you'll get an understanding as to how this came to be. It's no, it's no accident. She's captured your attention in some spaces, and she's going to continue to do that just because that's how she is. With all that going on, she's still a mother, and that's one of the hardest tasks of all that you know, I'm proud to say that she's doing a really, really good job with as well. But let me not, you know, drag this on any longer. Please help me welcome Stout Tisha. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> uh, I've been, I've been, I've been looking forward to this, right? Because <clears throat> I think your story is one of those incredible stories, and and people need to know about it—the trials and tribulations that you've gone through. Um, and everything else that you have to deal with. And I think that's the richness in your journey. But the beauty in it all is how you come out on the other side, which is now, right? And how you're, you're, you're flourishing yeah. in different spaces. Now, with every episode and every interview that I have with a guest, I always open with a quote. So I have a quote mm -hmm. that I, I, I found for you that I think fits who you are. Now, I'm going to read it to you. And I want you to tell me what comes to mind when you hear it. All right. Okay. So it reads, this is by Maya Angelou, by the way, you may encounter, okay. you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. It may be necessary to encounter the defeats so that you know who you are, what you can rise from it and how you can still come out of it the way that you are. What comes to mind when you hear something like that coming from Maya Angelou? It sounds like it's like it sounds like you go through things, but everything you go through is for a purpose. That's it. That's it. And that's what I received. To be honest, that's all. Like that's what was screaming at me. To and, be honest, and no, that's true because that's that's what I thought about when I saw that quote. I'm like, wait a minute, this okay. is this is her. <laughs> I'm like, this is exactly who she is. She's gone through so much, but it didn't it didn't stop you from your your evolution, right? It didn't stop you from yeah coming out on the other side. So let's start way back. I just want to kind of paint a picture where the listeners of this episode will have an idea of who you are completely as a person. Yeah. So tell me a little about your a little bit about your family and how many siblings you have and and how's that relationship growing up. So my family, well, I'm the baby, wow. and I'm Jamaican background, so you know they call me the wash belly because I'm the last. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I am the wash belly. Okay, wow. mom used to always remind me. Yeah. Yeah. Go wash belly. So yeah, um, I'm the baby, and I'm on I'm the baby on both sides of my family too. So from my dad's side, I have siblings. I have three siblings on my dad's side, okay. and they're all older than me. And then I have three siblings with my mom. Nice. So it was four of us that grew up in the house, jungle, yeah. you know. <laughs> and we moved around jungle too. Like we were on Barna and yeah. moved into onto Flemington. Yeah, but anyways. Okay. How was, it, we gonna say? how was it growing up being the baby? How were you treated? What were some of the challenges? <laughs> uh, okay, I was a brat. <laughs> like, you know, once upon a time, I used to be like, I'm not a brat when I'm here and yeah. say it or people in the family. But when I look back now as a grown up, yeah. I, was, I was a brat. Yeah. I was definitely a brat. Yeah. But and so as a baby, the wash belly, I was a brat. I was spoiled by my mom. My mom mm. spoiled me. And um, my sister, I had a sister, and it's like she. Oh my gosh, I used to fear her. Like I was scared <laughs> of my sister because it was like, like, oh my gosh, big sister. 
Like, you know, don't don't piss her off. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I was just, I would say growing up as a, as a baby, I was just a brat. I was spoiled. And like, I was, I guess I was annoying, you know, as a little sister to my big sister. Because yeah. there were times where my sister would never want to bring me places, but my mom would force her. And it's like, oh my gosh, why? But... You know, that's sibling life. That's yeah. what happens, especially sisters. Like, you know, wow. we used to fight. Like, my mom would say, like, puss and dog. That's how we used to fight. So, but yeah, it's my sister. Love my sister. <laughs> what, yeah. what What would you say were some of the benefits, like, the, the good things about being the baby in that scenario? You got everything you wanted the from mom. That, exactly. And I got away with a lot of stuff. That's another thing that pissed my sister off, too. <laughs> All my siblings, they felt like, you know, I got away with murder, like, pretty much. Do you, you, so, yeah, but... do you have, like, a, a favorite memory during the, those uh, adolescent years, those younger years? Oh, my gosh. A favorite? There's so much different memories. Oh, my... Like, what kind of memory do you want to hear? I don't know. Good things. Like, or, I have, or, or... I have good... Okay. <laughs> Silly things. Anything. <laughs> I have good memories that are funny. Yes, and, uh, share one of those, please. <laughs> okay. okay, so once again, we're Caribbean, right? Yeah. So, you know, Caribbean parents, they discipline. And I was bad. Like, I would do some things that were bad. and But I was so afraid of Lick. So what would happen is I ran. I remember one time running because I was getting in trouble. I think me and my sister, like I said, me and my sister fight all the time. And we used to share rooms at this time. And I think she would like, it was like, she would bully me with the blanket and stuff. And every time she would pull the blanket off me, I'd be like, stop, like make a little sound. So my mom warned us, if I hear one more time, I'm coming with the belt. <laughs> and all you hear is stop. <laughs> all you hear is the belt jingling. My mom comes in, she goes for my sister first, so I run. When my mom comes to me, okay, you know how the houses are in the jungle. There's 14 steps, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I jump from the second stairs down. My mom got concerned. She stopped and was like, oh, they both, oh, they both them. she thought I literally broke my bones to run from beat. And she's like, what, y'all? So I'm still running, eh? You know, I dropped down, fumble, boom, 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 got back up, ran again, went to the basement. Oh my God. And I'm afraid of spiders. If anybody knows me, I am, like, I, my biggest fear is spiders. Oh, Web, wow. I take that. And I went, I was so afraid of lift. I went all the way into the basement where the heater thing is, like, where all the beds are, and hid. <laughs> and my mom was just like, let me shot, let me shot. Like, like, trying to figure out, like, you know, if I'm okay. It, was, it wasn't even a matter of, like, okay, you're in trouble. It was just like, are you okay? Yeah. And when she seen that I was good and made the made sure it was clear, like, you're okay. You're, you're getting off. Just come out. Yeah. It's been the joke, the stigma that's been with me growing up. Every time we get together, family gatherings, my mom tells that story. My sister, somebody <laughs> brings up a story. Remember when you dropped from the second floor, like the second step, like, and bust up yourself and kept running the same way just to run from leg? I was like, oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I do remember that. No, that's, fun. that's funny because I can relate to some of those situations, boy, when you're just trying to run. You just. <laughs> yeah. Telling you, you know what it's like going up in the hood, man. You so, know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> so you you mentioned you mentioned jungle. I want to get your opinion or your perspective on the community. How did you see it? Looking back at it now, how do you, how would you describe uh, Lawrence Heights? Jungle was like or Lawrence Heights. Yeah. yeah jungle. Yeah. <laughs> jungle was. I, jungle was the best place ever. It was. I don't care what anybody says. Jungle was the sickest friggin' hood. It was the sickest block. <laughs> Everybody used to come for a block. Everybody. When things was good, when people wasn't killing each other over vagina or a bag of chips, <laughs> when things was good. Will you come up with this? <laughs> no, but for, for real though, it's true. You know, you know, I'm talking fast. You no. Know. I'm sorry, I can't sugar. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Be me. yourself. I need you to be you. I'm sorry, I'll be me. <laughs> but like, yeah, like when things were good, yo, like I remember the hood being the spot. Yeah. 
I loved my hood. I, I I enjoy just waking up and going outside just to see what's going on. Yo, what's going Who's yep. outside? Who's yep. outside? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Oh, I'm going over bridge. I'm yep. going under bridge. Yo, like, <laughs> oh, who's fighting over there? Yo, somebody just got pump up. Yo, did you hear? I loved it. Like, it was... Yeah, yeah I, I... and then you remember we had the annual um, big barbecue yes. at my mom's yes. house. Uh, yes. My house was the powerhouse. Yep. My mom was the plug, like, literally. Yep. And yeah, like it was, you know, those days were the best. Man, those days were the best. it's oh, funny. Yeah. It's funny. I always tell people I would never trade that experience for anything else. Like I, I, I I'm glad I grew up there as opposed to somewhere else because it makes right it, yeah. like it really does build like thick skin to be able to survive anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And 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 the richness, like you said, it the community. You knew everybody. You can go anywhere in that neighborhood where you didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be here. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you can go from here to there mm-hmm. and people we took care of each other in that way. And yeah. that's that's what's yeah. different about, you know, jungle and other neighborhoods that I, I can think of because, man, yeah. it's it, it was it was special. Definitely special. It, it really it really was. man. I have a lot of great memories in the hood. Man. A lot of great memories. Like if there's stories upon stories upon stories. Like, yeah. yeah. Would you would you change anything about how you grew up? If anything at all, what would you change? Just like, oh, oh my God. And not, it doesn't have know, to be anything like major, a... but anything small, anything that you would have said, you know, maybe if I had done this or if I had this opportunity or anything like that, anything that comes to mind that you would, you think you would have, you know, appreciated if you had the opportunity to do or try. That I would have changed or tr- had the opportunity to try. Holy. Yeah, yeah. Anything. Why is that question coming off as like. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just curious because because sometimes people always play that card of I regret something. But for me, I don't regret. Okay. Go for it. I got you. So maybe one thing that I would have changed, like I had. Okay, I had some friends. Like my age group, mm-hmm. um, that from growing up in the neighborhood, that like maybe I wish we all, not just myself, we yeah. all could have handled certain situations mm. um, better. Whereas maybe the outcome would have been that today we could still be friends and right. say like, "Yo, we've been rocking with each other since elementary." Like, right, right. It's not right. many people nowadays that could say, "Yo, this is my dog from elementary. We've been friends for like thirty years, yeah, or forty years, or like nobody could say that." Like, you know, yeah. So that's probably the only thing that would change, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah, that's it. If you look back during your high school era, where you were kind of bullying you you were like to me in the girl basketball scene you were the lebron because you were bigger than everybody else taller mm-hmm. right and just bullying everybody <laughs> yeah, <both I'm>, days. <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm curious how would how would those friends back then describe you if you were if you were if let's say if i were to ask them this question how would you describe t back then what would they say what do you think they would say it, well it would depend though like because different friends, you know, got different sides. That's true. Not to say, like, I switched it up, but yeah. some people, you just level them. Yeah, yeah. And you deal with them just like that. Yeah. And then you have other people, like, that's really, like, who you rock with. Like, that's your sister. That's your bro. Like, yeah. that's who you rock with. Like, you know? So, so they're going to see a certain side of you. So let's let's say we went to speak to those individuals mm-hmm. that were, like, sisters to you at that time. What would okay. they say? Yeah. They're going to say, yo, she comes out. And, yeah, she don't. She don't fuck a play. Like, she don't take no check. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. Like, she will always tell you as it is. She, That's what they would say. But then they would also say, like, you, people think or try to say, like, she's a bully or she, mm-hmm. she's so rude or whatever. But, like, if you actually know her, I'm mad cool. Yeah. And I'm actually corny as fuck. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I'm actually a big crybaby, too, sometimes. Like, they would say that, though. But only they would know that because they get that side of me. Yeah. I don't open up to every and anybody because there's just people that don't have a clean heart Mm -hmm. and they don't have good intentions all the time yeah so it's like i'm a person i read those things so it's like i I could have a friend that like 
yo, I, I, I could love that friend so much. Like, I even have a, a, a recent situation. Like, I have a friend that's, like, my good, good friend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we don't talk at all right now. Mm -hmm. And that's my choice. I choose not to deal with her because, like, I just feel like, as a friend, she she's not reciprocating. And yeah. it all stems from a, a conversation about her, me opening up to her about showing a vulnerable side mm. during a certain situation. Yeah. And she was took by surprise by me because in her eyes, it was like, oh, you don't show that side around me. Da -da 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 -da. So, sorry, my little <laughs> so I was being honest about it. And I said, what did you do? You see this time? And I said, like, that's because I don't feel comfortable, like, showing my, my vulnerable side with you. Yeah. Like, that's just honestly speaking. Like, you know, you don't give off that you know, where I feel comfortable. I just don't. And she didn't take, she didn't take my light to it. Like she didn't like it. Mm -hmm. She was very, she was pissed off, man. Oh, wow. And the way she reacted is what made me say, I can't. This yeah. is where I draw my boundary. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, that's, thank you. That's, that's tough. where I draw my boundary. Yeah, that's tough. That's yeah. tough. And, and you know, it's oh, funny. As you tell me that story, I'm thinking about how oftentimes we use the length of time we've we've grown up with somebody as our baseline mm -hmm. but then you realize that sometimes you're growing apart and you don't even realize you're going apart because mm -hmm. when you show more of yourself and based on like your friend the reaction it tells you wait a minute i don't know if if you are that friend that i can do this with mm -hmm. right yeah. so it's almost like they show another side of themselves because you showed one side of yourself and so which is which is good for you because you got to see it as opposed to if it was something a little bit more serious that, you know, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you're in the trenches with this person and then they show you a different side and you're like, oh, shoot, you weren't the one I was supposed to take to war with. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so that's, that's I think it's a, it's a blessing in a way that you, you learn this about that friend. That right. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. Outside of sports, what else were you into um, in your teenage years? like activities i was into dancing i i did i did dancing i stepped down I, I was a dancer yes like people might look at me now i'm like what but people who know they know yeah. i was a big dancer i used to start party finish party nice. remember back in the days it was always the house jam yeah yep. <laughs> you'd be skipping class just to go to a house jam <laughs> oh yo certain man's house is empty dukes aren't there what party lunchtime <laughs> like I'll never forget those <laughs> days, man. Oh my goodness, I'll never forget those days. Man. But yeah, I was a dancer and I also did step dancing. I used to be a part of a actual I was a part of a dance group and an actual step group. Nice. And I used to do performances and talent shows and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Did did you have any dreams of um becoming something professionally? And what was that thing? If you had a dream. So like, to be honest, yeah. To be honest. When I was young, young like a little girl, elementary, yeah, I had dreams to become like a superstar singer. Like I want to be a big time singer. Oh, wow. I swear to God, nice. yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And like, I remember I used to I used to go to. I remember my mom even had me in a a choir. It, it was so, such an expensive choir too, but it was one of those like soap opera like type of opera. <laughs> Nice type of choirs. It wasn't for me. Yeah. So I was learning all those alto and all, like all that stuff. Like those, it was weird for me. It's not for me, but like I went because my mom knew, knew that I really wanted to sing. Like it was something big. Yeah. Yeah. I got a little guy here. Wow. That's, I didn't realize that. That's pretty interesting because. Now it makes yeah. sense to me because that, that feels like it's a full circle, right? Where yeah, you're now exactly. an artist. And I didn't realize way back when you had that that same vision, that dream of, of becoming did, an entertainer. Yeah, not a lot of people know that. Uh -huh. My siblings could say that because Josh, you know, yeah, yeah, Trigger, he 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 used to laugh at me because he would see me writing songs when I was like oh. ten in my little book, and I'll be singing, but I was younger, so I'll be extra like, ah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> and yo, oh, Josh used to laugh at me. Sometimes he would hear me and be like, yo, and just start dying, and I get so annoyed. I'm like. But yeah, it was that serious, man. I really, I remember I wrote a song in grade like five. It was called Life. Oh wow! It went life, 
Life, life, life, life. Wow. I ain't even want it. It was so crazy. I laugh at the song now. But yeah, this yeah. song, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you've, yeah. you've been doing this for a minute. Now, yeah. how I want to talk a little bit about your parents. I know I know your mom meant a lot to you. Um, and she was... Oh. She was one of those neighborhood moms, right? Like everybody knew her because of how much time we spent in the house. Now, how would you describe your parents? I want to start with your your father first, and then we'll go into your mother. And like, how would you describe him? My dad, my dad is just real. And he's so old school. He's so, but he's a real, he's real. Like he's just real. And he's rude. So if you wonder where my room is, <laughs> him, but my mom too, they're both like, so it's just like a double mommy, like it's crazy. Yeah. But my dad is just, he's mad real, he's real, he's mad chill, he's cool, like he's a cool guy to talk to and reason mm-hmm. with, like he just keeps it a buff all the time. Nice. He tells you as it is. And um, as a father, like he's very loving, like he really, really, really loves his kids. Mm. And um, I'm his favorite. <laughs> Nice. Oh, well, you're the baby too, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm the baby. But, um, yeah, like my dad's dope, yo. He's mad cool. Mad nice. cool. Nice. He's my dad. What 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 impact um, did did um did he have? Is is would you say your mom had more of an impact on you or your dad growing up? My da- my mom definitely. Definitely mm. my mother. Um what does she mean to you? But my dad my mom, my mom's everything. That's my backbone. Like, yeah. Yeah. literally, and she's all of our backbone. She was the glue yeah. for the whole family, not just within our household, yeah. but just with the cousins too. All that she is the she was that glue. Yeah. She was the reason why any type of family orientation would take place because she was all about family, yeah. us getting along and doing certain things when warranted to like during certain like you know little festivities like for holidays and stuff like that she was always for that yeah so that's why every like holiday thanksgiving christmas all of it is at my mom's house wow. so that's stuff you know stuff like that we miss now that she's not here with us rest yeah. in peace to my mom rest in peace for sure that was that was a hard that was definitely a hard loss um it, it it's it's crazy because whenever i attend you know, a loss, a celebration of life, it's, it takes a little bit more out of me. Like it it makes me Mm -hmm. not want to go to the next one just because Mm -hmm. of who it is or if it's closer to me. And, and, and so it gets harder. And it, it, one of the hardest ones was obviously um, your older brother's loss. Right. So that was a tough one for me to be at, but um, it was good for me in the sense that I got to see him um Mm -hmm. because i hadn't seen him in a while and so we were able to Mm -hmm. reconnect at that point but yeah mom Mm -hmm. mom was definitely a a big loss and and rest in peace to her and and, you know i think she did an amazing job with not just her own kids but with the rest of us and yeah she was yeah like you don't you you don't realize it until you're older you know what i mean like as kids we don't realize Mm -hmm. how impactful other our friends parents were to us indirectly like the fact that she just opened her doors to say come in that's mm-hmm. huge like that was huge and if if there was a barbecue happening everybody would get something you know what i mean like it wasn't like mm-hmm. no this is just for my kids she just opened her doors all the time so that was that was mm-hmm. something that i definitely remember i mean if you look your court was yeah, was like that <laughs> yeah it was it was on our side yeah it definitely was you know i even i remember um one time, because she used to remember, my mom had all the parties, too. Yeah. So one of the parties she had, I'll never forget, one of the man them's mom came storming into the house, into the party, because her son was not supposed to be there. Mm. And she was pissed, came in there, embarrassed the guy. And, you know, my mom stepped in. Not to say, she wasn't stepping in on a, oh, like she wants to be nosy and involve herself in somebody's, you know, parenting with their yeah. child. Like it's her business. It was more so like, this is my home. I'm keeping an event where all the you them are welcome. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yep. youth friendly for them. Yeah. You have your issue at home with your kid. 
you keep that excitement there. Don't come here with it. Yeah. So that's where she stepped in and said, yeah. like, you know, yep. if you want to discipline them and carry on with whatever, whatnot, you have to take it outside. Yeah. You know, and people always talked about that. Like, yep. even that kid, that person, he's dead right now, too. Rest in peace to him. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. But um, that person... He never forgot that. Like, yeah. he never, like, he just had a different love for my mom after that situation. It was yeah. like, yeah. she didn't have to do that. And it's like, even though she wasn't really defending him, it was just like, fuck, it, it, it still saved him. Like, it, yeah. it, it helped helped yeah. him in that situation because he was getting... <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah just, my mom was just different like that. She was Man. different. So you're, you're a mom now. How many kids do you have? Two. Two. Two, two kids. And yeah. how, how has that journey been? That journey has been... First of all, the kids are almost 13 years apart. They're 12. Uh, yeah. 12 and some apart, but um, big gap. Yeah. Big, big gap. Yeah. So that tells you a little bit about the journey. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> apart from that, like, I love it. Uh, I love it. Like... Are are any of them like you? In 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 if they... this little one here, yeah. the little one, oh god! <laughs> I, I swear, he scares me, man. He he's scares me. he's yeah, feisty. Really, really concerned about this one. Yeah, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna push you to your limits, huh? <laughs> he already does. That's the thing. He's so. Man, this little guy is just not simple, man. It's not simple, but <laughs> so we love him to death. <laughs> what what's what's his name, by the way, if you don't mind? Andre. Oh yes, yes, Andre. He's a baby. Yeah. He's a baby. The older one, mm -hmm. my gosh, Page. he just turned how old? He he's turning thirteen tomorrow. Holy shit! Literally a teenager, right? Man, I still can't believe it. I'm having so many withdrawals. And he's tall, but... isn't he? He's taller than me, yeah. and I'm tall. You know what? Wow, I'm tall. thirteen like, already. He's Twelve years old, taller than me. Like, wow, wow. <laughs> so, I want I want to shift gears a bit. In our chats, you mentioned something um, in 2008. You went through a, a traumatic <laughs> experience. Talk yeah. talk to me about that. What happened there? Um, 2008. <laughs> um, I was I was shot. How did that happen? Simplest term. Like, yeah, I was like, um, traveling on the TTP, believe it or not. No um, way. Yeah, um, been traveling on the TTC. And, you know, just no good guys, up to no good. Young guys, up to no good. Because, you know, back to it still happens, but like back in those days, that those types of stuff was happening. Like you find randoms, yeah, yeah. people from these different neighborhoods, like on the train, just up to no good. And it was just one of those days, up to no good. And it was a situation where like one person tried to holler at me, mm. and I swerved, I curveballed them, and the next friend started to egg on a situation. Oh. And it was dumb, honestly. Like, long story short, it was dumb. And basically, it was a thing where it led to one person hitting me. And you know me. I don't, yeah. give, I don't care if you're a man or a female. I don't care. I'm yeah. going to fight you. Yeah. So I threw down. Like, like, I threw down and I'm fighting the guy. And I was actually kick, kicking his ass. Wow. And so while that's happening, I had a best friend at the time, too, that was with me. So she was jumping in and. You know, they attacked her and they, she's not like a fighter like me. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, she's a, she's a soldier because when I say she holds on for their life, like she would not let go of those guys. I'll never forget it. She would not let go. Wow. No matter how they hit her, her, she would not let go. Attention podcast enthusiasts. I've been your host, Derek Asante, for the DAP show. And we have an important announcement to share regarding your favorite podcast. Starting from this day forward, we have some exciting changes to ensure that the sustainability and continued growth of our show. We value your support and want to offer you an opportunity to become an even more integral part of our podcast community. As you may know, producing a high quality content requires resources, time and dedication to maintain the level of excellence you've come to expect from us. 
we are introducing a membership program exclusively for our loyal listeners. We present to you, our cherished audience, the opportunity to become an esteemed Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you will gain access to a treasure trove of podcast episodes like never before. Our full-length interviews and discussions with incredible guests will be exclusively available to our valued patrons. Your membership will help us grow and evolve, providing you with an even more enriching podcast experience. Membership is easy. Simply visit our website, dapsshow.podbean.com, or a podcast platform and click on the Become a Patreon button. Choose a membership tier that suits you best and gain exclusive askets to full episodes, additional perks like behind the scenes content and early episode releases. We will continue to release shortened episodes and highlight reels for all our listeners to enjoy. However, we encourage you to consider joining our Patreon community. Your support means the world to us and it ensures the longevity and quality of our podcast. Together, let's shape the future of our podcast. Visit our website or podcast platform today. Click that Become a Patreon button and unlock a world of captivating full-length episodes. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your understanding, your support, your enthusiasm. We can't wait to welcome you as a Patreon member.